Shalom. With real Hebrew Israelites coming to you week in, week out, Papa Son of the Return of the Most High and the Seventy Son. All praises and honor and glory to Yahweh, Ba'asham, Yahweh Shai. Double honors to the apostles out in New York, the great millstone at GMS. Um, honors to all Akim around the planet, lifting up the name Yahweh, Yahweh Shai, in truth and sincerity. This is Brother Uriah from um, GMS Chicago. And Brother Dr. Okay, and so um, we just had to sit down, you know, to the spirit. You can go ahead and speak, brother. No, um, brother had a question about uh, when you die in this thing, it's going to be martyrs. Like, what, what happens after that? You know, and uh, I went to Thessalonians to explain to him that the ones that die in Yahweh shall, shall rise first. They're going to be with Yahweh shall come in the chariots. And um, the spirit told me to start at the, the first verse in uh, First Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and just go through the whole verse and uh spirit said we'll sit down on it you know so we just gonna go through the spirit on it and Lord willing to set up on it so this is uh first thessalonians the fourth chapter i'm gonna start at the first verse it says furthermore it says furthermore then we beseech you brethren and exhort you by the lord yahweh shai that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please the most high so you would abound more and more. And then that, and that, that first verse is amazing. So just off, I'm going to reread it. It says, furthermore, then we beseech you, when you're beseeching somebody, you're begging them, you're uh, encouraging them, like, uh, what's the word? Um, insist. Like, I, I'm, I'm insisting that you do this this way, right? It says, brethren, and exhort you, the word exhort, to encourage, to uplift, to warn. By the Lord, Yahweh Shai, that as ye have received of us, walk and to please the most high. So oh, you received of us how ye oh, so ought to. Uh, it says, hey, as ye have received of us, how ye ought to walk. Because we have the examples that set before us. As Paul said, um, follow me as I am followers of Yahweh Shah. And he also says, everything you have seen and heard and um, seen in me, that you do. You know? I butchered it. Is you looking for that scripture that I just quoted? I grabbed it real fast. Because well, uh, like Isaiah 30 and 20 says, says thy teachers shall not be removed into a corner anymore, but thy eyes shall see thy teachers. You know? And they and and, and they and they not only teaching you, but they showing you how to walk in this thing. You know how to conduct yourself. You know, as fathers supposed to teach a son, you know. That's right. Um how did I thought everything you've seen and heard of me? So lock me. Bear with us, brothers. I want to get this crease up. Well, why are you doing that? I'll do Matthew 10 38. And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. That's what Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai said. Anyone that doesn't take up their cross. Now, what happened when Yahweh Shai was on the cross? All right? He died. All right? Not only did he die, but he got tortured, he got beat, he got ridiculed, he got put to shame. All right? Uh, and suffered all kind of uh, torture and, you know, degradation and, and, and got killed. Now, so that's one part of. You know, uh, taking up the cross is being prepared to to die in this truth. All right. Um, at the same time, taking up his cross is what he he walked the walk according to Hebrews. He didn't um, he didn't sin. All right. Hebrews said, uh, matter of fact, uh, Hebrews was it a uh, the fourth chapter of Hebrews when he says he was in all points uh, tempted. Right. But without sin, but that without sin, all right. Um, and that's a major here. Go, right. I, I got it. Uh, four and fifteen. But we have not an high priest which cannot be touched with the feelings of our infirmities, but was in all points tempted, like as we are, yet without sin. So picking up part of that, picking up the cross, is going through all manner of temptation. And still not sinning. All right, following the path that he he took. What did he do? He go out and teach. 
we need to go out and teach. All right. Uh, did he endure hardships? We have to endure hardships. Did he get killed? We might have to get killed. All right. And if Paul said, be followers of him as he follows Yahweh Shai, all we have to do is look at Yahweh Shai in his life and look at the apostles and in their lives. And then we know what path we need to take and suffer and endure all manner of shit. All right. This is um, Philippians, the fourth chapter. I'm going to start at the eighth verse. And it says, Finally, brethren, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue, and if there be any praise, think on these things, right? Those things which ye have both learned and received and heard and seen in me do. And the power of peace shall be with you. You know, so goes back to uh, um, the first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, when Paul said that as ye have received of us, he was talking about himself and the apostles of that time. But now today, it goes uh, uh, first and foremost to scriptures as the standard, Yahweh Shah. And then watching the uh, the apostles and the elders of Great Millstone, and then goes down to the different elders and elder brethren within each camp, you know. So it says, um, I'm gonna read verse one over again. It says, uh, First Thessalonians four and one. Furthermore, then we beseech you, brethren, and exhort you by the Lord Yahweh Shad, that as ye have received of us how ye ought to walk and to please the Most High, so ye would abound more and more. So that's how you abound more and more by doing so okay. by, by doing the things that you see the elder brothers who've been in the truth for uh, uh, 10 years, 15, 20, 30 years, man. Because it's something that they're doing right that the Lord constantly have them on, on the path to continue in this thing. And to abound more and more, abound in the spirit, abound in your faith, abound in knowledge, all right, abound in love. And bound in all the good things, all right. Um, that's going to help you to help wake up other brothers and uh, show yourself uh, worthy and edify and build up the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. This is verse two. It says, "For ye know what commandments we gave you by the Lord Yahweh Shai. For this is the will of the Most High, even your sanctification, that ye shall abstain from fornication." Hey, that don't mean no uh, uh, premarital sex. No such thing as premarital sex. Marriage is sex. All right. So in fornication is cheating on the Lord, man. All right. The Hebrew word for fornication is zana. And the first time you see the Hebrew word zana in the Old Testament is when it's talking about Israel committing whoredoms. And as the word whoredoms was there, you'll find it as fornication or whoredoms. All right. And it's and it said that Israel committed uh uh, when committed fornication with the most high cheating on him because mm -hmm. the root of fornication is basically meaning uh, a woman who is cheating on her husband all right or uh, a husband um, dealing with another man's woman mm -hmm. all right that goes into adultery and fornication and the Lord uh, says uh, that we should, um, for this is the will of the most high even your sanctification sanctification means to be set apart all right to be consecrated to be made holy all right um that ye should abstain from fornication you abstain from going off into these false ass idols false as gods false as philosophies false as doctrines all right to stay on the path following like he said uh as you received of us how you ought to walk Continue walking after the, the Most High, the Hawabah Shimia was shy, and the examples that he set, and he set up the apostles to follow the examples that they set, and your elders and your leaders. All right. Mm -hmm. This is Acts 2 and 42. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrines, right. and fellowship, and in breaking of bread, and in prayers. That's right. And another one to back that up is. Uh, so I'll be a second, I believe it's first Timothy. First Timothy. This is first Timothy. Uh it's second Timothy. So this is second Timothy 
2, uh, Sloppy, 2 Timothy 3 and 14. It says, But continue thou in the things that thou hast learned, and hast been assured of knowing the whom thou hast learned them. You know, so you got to continue in what you've been taught. Continue to follow uh, follow um, the example that's given as, as Paul uh, writing in uh, the first Thessalonians. But uh, it speaks about um, not being a uh, 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 staying away from fornication. Because in Revelation, the 14th chapter, in the fourth, fourth verse, speaks about the 144,000. And it says about, and it says this about them, verse 4. These are they which were not defiled with women, because they abstained from fornication, from dealing with those other philosophies. For they are virgins. These are they which follow the Lamb whithersoever he goeth. Because the, the leaders that the Lord set up is following the Lamb. So we follow them because they're following the Lamb. It says, These were redeemed from among men, being the first fruits unto the Most High and to the Lamb. So now to go back to uh, Thessalonians. Uh, 1 Thessalonians 4. And um, I'll read 3 again. It says, For this is the will of the Most High, even your sanctification, that ye shall abstain from fornication. And the scripture says to put, put the, um, make the law as the apple of thy eye, because she had keep you from the strange woman that fly up with her lips. And it's talking about those false philosophies and those false doctrines. Verse 4, it says that every one of you should know how to possess his vessel in sanctification and honor. You know? Knowing how to possess your vessel, meaning goes back to uh, what Paul said in First Corinthians. First Corinthians, I think it's nine, if I'm not mistaken. Yep, First Corinthians nine and twenty-seven, and it reads, "But I keep under my body and bring it into subjection, lest that by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should become a castaway." You know, so know how to possess your vessel, know how to conduct yourself, know how to carry yourself. And there's so many scriptures that prove that. You, know, you can go to Ephesians, the sixth chapter, putting on the whole armor of the Most High, all right, to, to prepare yourself against all the wiles of the devil, all right? You can go to um, the fruits of the Spirit. He said, mm -hmm. but the fruits of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, long suffering, etc. Mm -hmm. all right? Um, uh, just being rooted and embedded in these scriptures, all right? You got to put these scriptures in your inward parts of your in your mind. You have to think the scriptures, know the scriptures, read the scriptures. All right, that's how you possess your vessel to sanctification. All right, um, knowledge and wisdom is the stability of that times, according to Isaiah. Correct. Yeah. So, what's going to get you knowledgeable in the times that we're living in? No matter if it's the end, end where it's going to be uh, um, the chip, mar martial law, and all kind of manner of. Uh, riots and bullshit that's going on in the world or to right now every day living as we go on in the normal fucking shit but this shit about to fall down and this shit about to hit the fan all right so we need to know how to possess our vessels we have to know how not to fall and that's through this word man and then listening and watching the elders man watching the apostles man watching the the, the leaders of yasharala and um and being like the bereans hearing the with the ready mind but at the same time, going back to make sure what they said is the truth. All right. Verse 5, it says, Not in the lust of the compassance, even as the Gentiles, which know not the most high. And that concupiscence is uh, basically... Uh, Unbridled um, lust. Right, right. right just mm -hmm. very uh, over-emotional and wanting, uh, uh, you know, just lusting for everything. Man. You know, wanting this, wanting that, and lusting for this and... Go, matter of fact, I'm gonna pull up that word too. Right? Mm -hmm. Basically, uh, 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 whatever your flesh desire, just giving it to it, man. You know, and the scriptures speak about um in Galatians the fifth chapter, walking in the spirit, and you should not fulfill the lust of the flesh. That goes back to knowing how to uh, uh possess your vessel. You know, it goes back to wisdom of Solomon in the sixth chapter where it says that uh she she uh, uh the first beginning of her is the desire of discipline. The beginning of her is talking about wisdom. The beginning of wisdom, you have the desire of discipline. That's right. You know, to control your, your, yourself, you know. Right. That the word concupiscence is uh the Greek word epithumia. Um epithumia. Epithumia. Desire. Craving. Longing. Mm. Desire for what is forbidden. 
And that's where the root of it really goes down to is you desiring shit that you're supposed to want, that you're supposed to have. All right? Lust, longing, especially for what is forbidden. All right? All right, so it says not in lust or it's extreme desires for what you're not supposed to have, even as the Gentiles, which know not the most high. Go ahead. Mm -hmm. Verse um, 6. It says that no man go beyond and defraud his brother in any matter, mm. because that the Lord is the avenger of all such, as we also have forewarned you and testified. I'm just playing. Mm -hmm. You know, go around, you know, trying to take advantage of the brothers or the brotherhood. All right? You, you, you love the brotherhood. You try to see what I can do for the brotherhood. Mm -hmm. All right? And I'm talking about, he said, in any matter? Yeah, in any matter. That means yep. small shit to big shit to little shit, everything. You don't don't get up, don't try to default the brother for the last chicken. Mm -hmm. All right. And don't try to default the brother from his money or his woman or anything. Yep. All right. Yep. Because I got I got an example of that in the scriptures right here. This is Acts 5. I'm gonna start at the top. It says, But a certain man named Ananias with Sapphira, his wife, sold a possession and kept back part of the price. His wife also being privy to it, and brought a certain part and laid it at the apostles' feet. But Peter said, Ananias, why has Satan filled thy heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back part of the price of the land? While it remained, was it not thine own? And after it was sold, was it not in thy own power? Why hast thou conceived this thing in thy heart? Thou hast not lied unto men, but unto the Most High. Because it just said in, in Thessalonians that the Most High is the avenger of all such who do that, right? It says, um, verse 5, And Ananias, hearing these words, fell down and gave up the ghost, and great fear came on all of them that heard these things. You know, you can continue to read, because he, he asked the wife, the wife came in, asked her the same thing, that bitch lied also, and the Lord zapped that bitch right then and there too, you know, took the spirit right out of her, you know? So go back to uh first Thessalonians, the fourth chapter, and I'm in, in the seventh verse. It says, For the most high have not called us unto uncleanness, but unto holiness. That's why we have to be righteous, man. That's why you know being righteous is clean. Being wicked is is dirty. All right. It's not talking about somebody who didn't take a shower in the morning. All right. It's talking about spiritually speaking. Okay. Mm -hmm. It says, uh, he therefore that despises it, despises not man, but the most high. Anybody who not, I guess what they say in Romans, uh, what if some didn't believe? Does that make the faith of the most high without effect? Mm -hmm. He said the most high forbid. All right. Uh, you, you, you can despise the words of the living power, but what you're doing is only despising yourself <laughs> and ultimately most the most high. Right? If you're an Israelite, you're despising yourself because we are of the Most High and you're only hurting yourself. Matter of fact, that goes to one of my, what, one of my favorite scriptures, right? Uh, Ezra's. Uh, uh, one. Yeah, I'm going to get it real quick. Go ahead, brother. Uh, this is uh, John 15. I'm going to start at verse 18. If the world hate you, ye know that it hated me before it hated you. Now I'm going to jump down to verse 23. He that hated me hated my father also. So it goes back to the Thessalonians and it says that um that's first Thessalonians 4 and 8. He therefore that despiseth despises not man but the most high. So if you despise a brother in, in in this truth, you're not despising that brother. You know? Probably despise, oh man, I don't like the position that the Lord gave him and I don't like this and that. Well, hey, it's ultimately uh Yah Basha me out shy that you despise him, man. That you think it ill toward, you know. That's right. Um, this is first, no, so like a second address one and 27. Ye have not as it were forsaken me, but your own self, saith the Lord. Mm -hmm. You go outside of Yahweh Bashmi Al Shai, you forsaking yourself. You know what I'm saying? If you despise in the most high, you're despising yourself, you're fucking your own self over. All right, um, let, would you let him out? Uh, all right. Now back in um verse nine. No, no I'm gonna read, read, I'm gonna read eight. Eight again. 
1 Thessalonians 4 and 8, it says, He therefore that despiseth, despiseth not man, but the heavenly Father, who hath also given unto us his Holy Spirit. That's right. But as touching brotherly love, ye need not that I write unto you, for ye yourselves are taught of the Most High to love one another. Right. right, because it, as it is written in, in John, it says, um, so I, I thought I had it right here. But pretty much Yahweh Shah said, um, this is how they know that you are my disciples, is if you have love one toward another. So that's how that's how you can tell if a man is actually of Yahweh Shah, man. If you have true, sincere love for your Akim, you know? Right. It says, um, verse 10. And indeed ye do it towards all the brethren, which are in all Macedonia, but we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. And that's what this is all about. Increasing more and more. Um, that makes me think of Peter. Uh is it Peter? I think it's the book of Peter. Um it also reminds me of Galatians as well. But I'll go with Peter real quick. Uh first Peter my knowledge because a lot of times brothers get complacent in this truth um yeah first peter 2 i'll start over one wherefore laying aside all malice and all guile and hypocrisies and envies and all evil speakings as newborn babes desire sincere milk of the word that ye may grow thereby all right he told us to uh, then this is goes into also how we supposed to act in our conduct as we should know how to behave ourselves and uh, our conduct and conversation should be in the heavens all right should be in the scriptures and in this word we should be embodying it all right but at the same time we need to keep growing all right we need to abound like it said in verse one abound more and more and then in verse uh, uh, 10 we need to increase more and more that we may grow thereby and continue to grow in the faith of how about Shimei was shot, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I found a preacher that I was looking for. This is John 13 and uh, 34. This is a new commandment I give unto you, that ye love one another as I have loved you, that ye also love one another. By this shall all men know that ye are my disciples, if ye have love one to another. So that's why Paul said, that as such a brother we love, you need not that I shall write unto you. You know, because the, the church of Thessalonia was, was, was showing brotherly love unto the church of Macedonia. Because in verse 10, it explains it, it says, And indeed, ye do it towards all the brethren which are in all Macedonia. But we beseech you, brethren, that ye increase more and more. So let the love continue to build and grow. You know? Verse um, 11. 1 Thessalonians 4 and 11. And that ye study to be quiet and to do your own business and to work with your own hands as we command you. What's that study to be quiet? Dude? All right. Uh, that, that people will read right past that. <laughs> All right. That word study is philotomiamahi, <laughs> something like that, or uh, or whatever. To be fond of honor, to be actuated by love of honor. From a love of honor to strive to bring something to pass, to be ambitious, to strive earnestly, make it one's aim. So wait a minute. It said, make your aim to be quiet. Mm. Right? Let's go let that sink in for a minute. Make your aim, your study, your 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 earnestness to be ambitious to to be quiet and quiet means uh hey sukadzo to keep quiet to rest cease from labor lead a quiet life instead of those who are not running hither and thither but stay at home and mind their business <laughs> so on one level is telling you to um strive earnestly to mind your own motherfucking business right that's one very thing that a lot of young brothers and older brothers or brothers period can get in trouble minding everybody being in everybody's business all right and minding other people's affairs but then on a deeper spiritual level if it's telling you to strive earnestly 
to be quiet. One of this is to rest. On a whole nother level is, our, is this our rest? What's our rest? The kingdom. Strive earnestly for that rest to what to give to the kingdom. All right? You know, these scriptures are deep, bro. These, these scriptures hold a lot of meaning in multi-layers and multi-fold. All right? Uh, and it also says, and to do your own business. That's why, you know, through the spirit, you know, on one, one level is that to mind your, your own business, man. Do your own thing. Stop trying to be in everybody else's thing. Stop trying to be that guy. Stop trying to be the top guy. Just be a brother. How can I be a better brother? The Lord puts you in a position, take whatever position he's given you and try to do it to the best of your ability, not for vain glory, but for most high sake and for his will to be done sake. Say, Father, not my will, Lord, but thine will be done. Even if it means doing th things that you don't want to do. All right? Even if it means burning the midnight oil, if it means to uh, go out and do the extra sit down or um, give, you know, 20 bucks out of your last hundred, you know what I'm saying? That's going, you know, you know you're going to have to live off of $80 for a week and a half to the next paycheck. So you might have pinched, you know, cut corners just to help a brother out. All right. These are the things we got to start really embodying the brotherhood, embodying these scriptures and embodying the life and path. And how about Shimei was shot? Okay. Um, it says, and to work with your own hands as we can manage you. But this ain't no uh, walking, uh, walking uh, your dog, taking your child by the hand type of thing. This is a ministry. You got, you got, every brother has to stand before the most high, uh, spiritually speaking, and show themselves worthy of you. How about you now, Shai? You got to be doing your own work. You got to be in them scriptures by yourself. You need to be watching videos by yourself. Now you have the most high set up guides. And they will guide and do breakdowns and things of that nature to a certain degree. But, you know, it's, it's also, you can't just hand, uh, uh, spoon, feed. spoon feed brothers, and, and, and which is actually handicapping them. If you just giving the brother this, you know, you know, all the time here, here, here. No, bro, you go and find out. I get mad when a brother come up and say, uh, what's that scripture say? And such and such and such. I'm like, well, uh, break it down. And they read it. And I'm like, what's that word mean? I don't know. And I'll talk to you later. Go go find out the definition of these words when you come back and holler. You, you come and ask questions when you've already exhausted every avenue of trying to your mind. You, what, you broke down the words, you went to the etymology, you went to precepts, and, and you're not 100% sure. Then it's like, okay, okay, look, I know this word meaning this, this meaning that, but this and that, and I don't know what it means. How could you help me out type of thing? Versus always wanting to be uh, spoon fed. You got you to gotta go do your own work. Right, like this guy, the scripture says, work with your own hands. All right, because if you read it, that's why a lot of times, and this is for younger, uh, for, well, it's for any, anyone in Yahshua, but I've learned a good tool if I want a brother to really understand something is to set it up for him, and then let him walk down that path. He's going to see it. You set him up, you bring the right scriptures, you bring the right points, and you put it out there, and then let him basically figure it out. Because once they, it clicks in their mind by walking down, you might give them the tools to see it. And you say, okay, we'll read this scripture and read that scripture and uh, to, to break down the one they asked about. And when they go and put their mind to it and they look at the whole picture, they're like, ah, then it sticks in their mind and they remember it more versus you spoon feeding somebody, which they might not keep that. They might forget it. Right? right. Um, back in First Thessalonians 4, verse 12. That you may walk honestly toward them that are without, and that you may have lack of nothing. So you, when you're walking, you, you're living, the way you conduct yourself, out here in the highways and byways, you're honest because you got the right breakdowns. <laughs> you, you, tell, you got, you got uh, the 100% doctrine. All right? You're telling the truth. All right? And uh, you're not lacking, you know, in understanding. You're not lacking. Go ahead. It says... But I would not have you to be ignorant, brethren, concerning them which are asleep, that ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So you can tell from right here that as we have brothers that's coming to the faith and you establish relationships and so forth, some brothers die. Some brothers are taken by the Lord. We had Elder uh, Nathaniah here in Chicago, 
Bro, I tell you about I love that brother, man. I love that brother. And he was in this truth all the way on his deathbed till he died. Matter of fact, he was out teaching, sick with cancer, and teaching in the cold rain. It didn't matter. He did it to the point where you know he uh, when he couldn't stand up, he had to sit down from time to time. And the only time he stopped coming out and teaching this one, his body couldn't he couldn't take he couldn't do it no more. And he was bedridden, you know what I'm saying? Uh, and, and he died in the faith. All right, believe it. Was he perfect? No. Were we perfect? No. All right, but he died calling on Yahweh Bashim Yahweh Shai and, and endured to the end. You're gonna have brothers like that. All right. And he the, the scriptures tell us, you know, they're just sleeping. Uh, as how many precepts we got on sleep? He's a hundred, <laughs> you know, Jan at least. And uh he said, Don't sorrow. Right, because if you're sorrowing for that brother, I mean, you can mourn for the brother and be, you know, sad. The brother's gone, but it said, uh, you don't be like one somebody ain't got no hope. You know, and they lose the goddamn mind like these, these uh, these niggas at the church. You know, when they when they let their funeral, or their family funeral, or somebody funeral, right? And they lose their mind, they going crazy. You know what I'm saying? They they lose the code. You know, they 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 have fits. Life can't go on. They visit the grave two to three times a week. You know what I'm saying? Dead. Go ahead. I had a couple precepts to prove. Because uh, it, it said, But I would not have you to be ignorant, brother, concerning them which are asleep, yet ye sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. You know, and the elder broke it down as talking about them that are dead. This is uh, Luke 8 and. um. I'm starting at verse 50, verse 49. It says, While he yet spake, there cometh one from the ruler of the synagogue's house, saying to him, Thy daughter is dead, trouble not the master. But when Yahweh heard it, he answered him, saying, Fear not, believe only, and she shall be made whole. And when he came into the house, he suffered no man to go in, save Peter and James and John, and the father and the mother of the maiden. And all wept and bewailed her, but he said, Weep not, she is not dead, but sleeping. And they laughed him to scorn, knowing that she was dead. And he put them all out and took her and took her by the hand and called, saying, Maid, arise. And her spirit came again, and she arose straightway, and he commanded to give her meat. And her parents were astonished, but he charged them that they should tell no man what was done. So when this young woman was dead, Yahweh Shah told him that, hey, she, she's not dead. She's only sleeping. She's at rest. She's in the spirit world. The same thing that it said in um, 1 Samuel, the 28th chapter. And I'm going to get straight to the point. The 28th chapter and the 7th verse. It says, Then said Saul unto his servants, uh, I'm gonna start at six. And when Saul inquired of the Lord, the Lord answered him not, neither by dreams nor by Urim nor by prophets, because Samuel was dead at this time. The Samuel was the prophet that uh, Saul always went to to inquire of the Lord. So Samuel was dead. So Saul was uh, looking for basically a word from Yah by Shemuel Shah, and then the Lord didn't answer. So verse seven. Then said Saul unto his servants, Seek me a woman that hath a familiar spirit, that I may go to her and inquire of her. And his servant said to him, Behold, there was a woman that had a familiar spirit at Endor. And Saul disguised himself and put on other raiment, and he went, and two men with him, and they came to the woman by night. And he said, I pray thee, divine unto me by the familiar spirit, and bring him up whom I shall name unto thee. Which let you know that those fucking motherfuckers who conjure up the spirits and shit, man, that's, that some of them should be real, man. And, uh, verse 9. But some, some of them is fucking frauds, fakes, you know. But hey, some of them are real. That's right. Just like you know, people don't think that there's real magic, or they can't like uh, back in Egypt, the uh, the prognosticators for Pharaoh, mm -hmm. his uh, false priests, they actually did miracles too, on the left hand side. You know, uh, you people don't believe in the scriptures. They don't believe in the Most High, but they'll believe in the, in the white man. 
know what I'm saying? To me, it's still a miracle that I can pick up a phone and call somebody and there's no wires attached to it. Mm. All right? But that's because that's, that you know, that's the power of the Lord. And uh, the power of the Lord is mighty, bro. On the left and on the right. <laughs> uh, Good, brother. That's a lot. He's still it reading. Says, um, yeah, yeah, it's more Saturday. It says, um, uh, verse 9, And the woman said unto him, Behold, thou knowest what Saul had done, how he hath cut off those that have familiar spirits and the wizards out of the land. Wherefore then layest thou a snare for my life to cause me to die? And Saul sware to her by the Lord, saying, As the Lord liveth, there shall no punishment happen to thee for this thing. Then said the woman, Whom shall I bring up unto thee? And he said, Bring me up Samuel. And when the woman saw, and when the woman saw Samuel, she cried with a loud voice. And the woman spake to Saul, saying, Why hast thou deceived me? For thou art Saul. And the king said unto her, Be not afraid, for what sawest thou? And the woman said unto Saul, I saw God ascending out of the earth. And he said unto her, What form is he of? And she said, An old man cometh up, and he is covered with a mantle. And Saul perceived that it was Samuel, and he stooped with his face to the ground and bowed himself. And, and that's another cut to let you know who are the sons of God. Right. And he said, I saw God ascending out of the earth. And he said, what form was he of an old man? Verse 15, and Samuel said to Saul, why hast thou disquieted me to bring me up? And Saul answered, I am sore distressed for the Philistines make war against me. And the Most High is a part of me and answered me no more, neither by prophets nor by dreams. Therefore have I called thee that thou mayest make known unto me what shall I do? Then said Samuel, Wherefore then doest thou ask of me, seeing the Lord is departed from thee and is become thy enemy? Um, so I can just scroll down. If I wasn't mistaken, I thought he said that he was at rest. He already read that part to my and disquieted me. Kind of. Kind of. Well, that was the point that, that Samuel was at rest, you know, that he that he was uh he was asleep. He said, why haven't you disquieted me? Mm -hmm. If he was not, if he said disquieted, that's the opposite of quiet. Right? Matter of fact, you just went into the word quiet over here in, in, in Thessalonians, and then one part of that meant rest. So it basically broke yeah. this, they broke yeah. his rest, you know. We don't have to go that deep. They can't see it and you broke down the fuck it. You know? It says, um, verse 14, For we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh, the ones that died, will the Most High bring with him. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. Oh, wait, hold, wait, hold on. So it says, For if we believe that Yahweh died and rose again, even so them which also sleep in Yahweh, will Yahweh, the Most High, Yahweh, by Shem, Yahweh bring with him. Now we talk about, uh, Following, uh, uh, following the path of uh, the Yahweh and the elders, right? He went into the bear, you know, carrying the cross after Yahweh Shai, correct? Uh, now, right here, it says, um, if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so, them will also will, will sleep in Yahweh Shai. The Most High will do the same thing to them. So, if you do die, Hallelujah. Yeah. Then, what the scripture said in Psalm, precious is the death of his saints. Mm -hmm. To the Most High, if if you died and you followed that same path as the, the Most High gave you, how was I the power to uh, to raise himself up? So will the Lord give us? Uh, well, He'll raise us up. All right, He'll He'll return that that life force into our spirit, and and He's going to raise us up. All right, um, in Second Maccabees, the seventh chapter, uh, the seventh chapter, the the sons, the seven sons that got killed. They spoke of, you know, being, you know, killed. Oh, you can take, you can kill me, but I'm going to be, I'll be back. Now I'll get a couple examples from that. Go ahead, um, Let me just uh, keep reading. It says, uh, verse 14, For if we believe that Yahweh Shai died and rose again, even so them also which sleep in Yahweh Shai will the Most High bring with them. Okay. I got one. This is Second Matthew 7 and 9. And when he was at the last gasp, he said, Thou like a fury takest us out of this present life. But the king of this world shall raise us up 
to have died for his laws and to everlasting life. So we we as a people knew you can kill the body. And what's the scripture say? Um, they're not them who can uh, who can uh, kill the body, but kill you know fear him who can kill the body and the spirit. You know what I'm saying? Uh, verse eleven. He said courageously, "These I had from heaven, and from his laws I despised them, and from him I have hoped to receive them again." And he's talking about um, his his hands. And he, he held up his hands and said, "Oh, hey, I got these from the Most High, and I've been fucking them up ever since I got them." Cut them off, that's fine. He's gonna give me some new ones. You know what I'm saying? How are you gonna give him a new body new hands? And that new body. All right. And and uh what's it? Corinthians? Oh, uh, was it what is, I forgot what chapter uh 15, first Corinthians 15. Which one? Uh, uh, uh that's a good one. That's that I, I'm getting that one, but I think I'm mixing it up with another one too. But so when we see him, uh when he comes, we should be as he first is. John. All right. His first time. But that twinkle of an eye is a good one too. Right? But we this is we don't the Lord's got us, man. We gotta trust him. We gotta trust him that he's gonna raise us up. Because we can't kid we can't be beat all by ourselves. We need the Lord to come do it. All right, and we're waiting on the most high. Otherwise, we're gonna be stuck down here in the same condition. All right. Did you find it? Mm -hmm. It's first John three and two. Beloved, now are we the sons of the most high, and it doeth not yet appear what sh what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, we shall be like him, for we shall see him as he is. That's right. So we should be like him. Yeah. So there you go. Go ahead, brother. Back in uh first Thessalonians four, verse fifteen now. For this we say unto you by the word of the Lord. That we which are alive and remain unto the coming of the Lord shall not prevent them which are asleep. For the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the Most High, and the dead in Yahushai shall rise first. So now, where, where's the dead in Yahushai? With Yahushai? In the spirit world. And we can prove that by going to the book of Ecclesiastes, and we can find, we can see what the scriptures say. In Ecclesiastes, uh, it's a couple of them. Um, I can go straight to uh, 12, 10, yeah, I'm just 7, gonna go straight 10, to the point. Yeah, this is Ecclesiastes 12 and verse 7. Then shall the dust return to the earth as it was, and the spirit shall return to God who gave it. When we die, that flesh goes into the body, ground, all right, and it decays. The spirit goes to the most high. Like I'll read it again. And the spirit shall return unto God who gave it. They go into the most high power into the chariots. So if we go back to Thessalonians, it says, uh, for the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the trump of the most high, and the dead in Mashiach shall rise first. So who's gonna be the first ones to get those uh their angelic bodies? The ones right next to them. Right, and now in the spirit world, they don't uh they're 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 resting it cool, but when he comes and descends, what's what's he what's happening when he descends? <laughs> We're gonna be like what? He is the the, the 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 elect of the most high that's in the chariots of the Lord is gonna get their bodies and they're gonna be they're gonna rise first, as the scripture says. All right, and then the rest of Yasharallah. Of the elect of Yahshua, which we hope to be a part of, is going to get their spiritual bodies. All right, go ahead. Then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air, and so shall we ever be with the Lord. So when He comes, the uh, uh, day on deck, the Lord's going to raise us up, and we're going to be on deck, and we're going to sit over here, and we're going to watch the destruction of our enemies. We're going to watch the downfall of our enemies. All right, we're going to watch the fireworks, the most highest fireworks called ICBM nuclear missile fire. Ain't going to be no fireworks ever can compare to the Lord um, tearing up this country, man. For all the shit that they've done to us, man, it's going to be a beautiful day. All right, go ahead. Uh, this is Revelation 18 and 4. It says, And I heard another voice from heaven saying, Come out of her, my people 
that you be not partakers of her sins and that you receive not of her plagues. That's right. One of those plagues that, that Lord willing, we hope not to receive is those missiles, man. You know, is is getting beamed up into those chariots. That's right. I mean, that does you go in, in the other revelation, was it 13 or something? Uh, 11. 11? 11. 11. 11. When it said, uh, you know, come up hither. 11 and 12. You got it? Yeah. Oh, right. It's Revelations 11 and 12. And they heard a great voice from heaven saying unto them, come up hither. And they ascended up to heaven in a cloud and their enemies beheld them. And that cloud is a chariot. Yep. All right. Right in front of our enemies. All right. So, I mean, and this is really comfort to the most high. How about you now, Shai? I know the last next verse. It is really, it really is because, you know, when you when you love someone, the brothers and the, you know, your family, you hope that they're righteous and so forth, and you, you hope that they make it to the kingdom. And you know, when you really love somebody, you don't want them. To, you don't want them, you don't want them to go from you. But also, when the Lord returns, He's going to return with the elect. All right. And those elect are not then then we don't die, we rest, we sleep. All right? Because there's no end to life. All right. And the Lord just put it in cycles. And he only put it in cycles for us for now. All right? Uh, but in the kingdom, we're going to live eternally. All right. And regular mankind will go live, go through the cycles of living and dying. All right. Uh, but his last verse back in uh first Thessalonians 4 uh I'm gonna read 17 again it says then we which are alive and remain shall be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air and so shall we ever be with the Lord wherefore comfort one another with these words that's right you know and, and that's comforting to know that Psalms 116 says precious is in the sight of the Lord is the death of the saints so if, if you have to be a martyr, man, that's comfort in, in a faith builder to know that if you have to die for this thing, man, yeah, you're going to be the first one in them ships coming back with Yahweh shot. That's right. You know, which is a glorious thing, man. Or whether you endure until the end and get to see the, 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 the glory of Yahweh shot, Yahweh shot, the chariots come and, and, and go will they get beamed up into it, man. Either way, it's, it's a glorious thing, you know. That's right. Um, this is Revelations 15 and 1. And I saw another sign in heaven, great and marvelous, seven angels having seven last plagues, for in them is filled up the wrath of the Most High. And I saw, as it were, a sea of glass mingled with fire, and them that had gotten, gotten the victory over the beast and over his image and over his mark and over the number of his name and uh, stand on the sea of glass having the harps of the Most High, all right? And they seen the Son of Moses, the servant of the Most High, and the Son of the Lamb, saying, Great and marvelous are the works, are thy works, Lord God Almighty. Just and true are thy ways, thou King of saints. Mm -hmm. So he said uh, that they got the, these are them that had gotten the victory over the beast, all right? If you die on this side, you're getting victory over the beast. But if we make it and endure until the Most High return, we get victory over the beast. That's talking about us collectively into the chariots after the whole shebang. All right. That means, and then we're going to be, uh, they said they got the victory over the beast, over the mark, which lets you know those are people that were down here living and they have, they made it up to the, to the most high and the people who, uh, and the brothers who had passed on before then will be there. We all will be together rejoicing and singing that song of Moses. We're all going to be, uh, that's, the, that's the end game, all right? That's what we want to do. We want to get the victory over Esau and uh, the wicked, man, mm -hmm. all right? And mm -hmm. where the, no, and it says standing upon the, uh, the, the sea, sea of glass. mingled with glass, man. Right. That's, that's them looking out the chariots through those through the chariot windows that's and right. seeing seeing that lake of fire, which is going to be America getting engulfed by that nuclear fire, man. That's right. Oh, as we watch over the ozone, Lady, mm -hmm. and I see a glass. Yep. All right, and we're going to be watching because uh, I let you know the, the Bible's parabolic. You see a glass of the ozone layer, and we're above it. You see the earth and the ozone layer like this, and the chariots will be above it, and we'll be watching 
America get blown the fuck up and uh, and broken in three parts, as the scriptures say. Watching Israel get blown up so it can get cleansed, so the pink faggot city can be cleansed, that wailing wicked ass wall can be cleansed, that fucking the temple mount next to the fucking mosque. You know what I'm saying? It is just they, they let you know that that those air those so-called um, Jewish cars are rats ain't the real people, man. How are you gonna have a mosque to a whole nother God in the holy so-called city if you was the holy people? You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. That don't make no goddamn sense, man. Nobody wanna talk about that. Why? Because they worship all gods and all fallacies and all fucking manner of false ass doctrine. That's why you got Pink City over there. But the Lord gotta clean that up. And, uh, and nukes gonna drop on other various parts of the planet, man. All right, and that's just that's what it's gonna be. All right, so yes, yeah, yeah, I got Psalms ninety-one. Just the precept of Revelation fits in. The Psalms ninety-one and seven: A thousand shall fall at thy side, and ten thousand at thy right hand, but it shall not come nigh thee. Why? Mm -hmm. Because Lord, what are we gonna be in those chariots? Only with thine eyes shalt thou behold and see the reward of the wicked. You know, and that's looking down from those chariots, man. Y'all about show me how y'all rise on. We know the, we are those men that get the victory over the beast as it is written you know right. so you know then this is and those are this is the this says uh wherefore comfort one another with these words if you go look at the whole chapter started off with uh how we ought to walk and to please the most high and we'll abound more and more you follow these examples of the men of the lord find keep with the brotherly love study to mind your own goddamn business study study to show yourself approved go out there and do the work of the most high honestly uh, conduct yourself as a man of the lord don't don't get lose hope but endure until the end then this is where this is our comfort and our our end game the chariots of the lord whether you die in this truth or you get delivered um uh, in this truth and this is our comfort this is our hope this is our mission all right, so anything else? But that, hey, stay in it. We're hoping to get beamed up on them chariots. All right, follow the path of the apostles that the brother brought out earlier. Continue in the doctrine of the gospel. Um, endure to the end. Try to stay under the, uh, no, not try, stay under the wicked radar. All right, by when I say that, I'm talking about stay away from wicked. You, you should have a radar that says, um, you should see wickedness coming from a mile away, and it's bing bing. Uh oh, that's wickedness that way. I'm not gonna go that way. Bing, I'm not gonna go that way. Bing bing, I'm not gonna go that way. You know what I'm saying? Follow the Lord. All right. Ask the Most High to give you the strength and the power to to, to come out of this shit, and the Lord will have mercy on you. How I desire. So, with that, I want to say all praises and honor to Yahweh by Shem Yahweh Shai. Hopefully, this was edifying to whoever has watched um double honors to the apostles out in new york great millstone gms honest to all i came around the planet lifting up the name of how i was shy in terms of sincerity with that we're going to say shalom, shalom.